Hey, welcome ladies and gentlemen to a showcase of a tool that I created, which I'm calling Quick Code UI. So this tool is for creating UIs for websites, in this case, HTML and CSS. So it's essentially an HTML and CSS editor. So why would you want to use this instead of typing the things yourself? Because normally what you do is you type in your text editor and then you go to your browser and check what's happening. Now this can speed up your workflow because you can start your project in this, export it, and then edit your project further to improve it if you want to. But otherwise you can get complete products from this already. So let's see why you would want to use this and how it actually speeds up your workflow. So the first thing with this thing is it's easy to add items. So you just click the add button here and then you see a bunch of folders here that contain something you might want to use. If you don't find what you're using here, what you want to use here, you can simply um, click on elements here to see basic stuff like buttons, a div, h1, an image, and so on. These are very basic things and here you can move to the second page here and see what's available. Now there's a lot available here. For example, yeah, if you don't want empty things, for example, you have cards here. Now, these are complete cards with animation effects and all that. So if I click, for example, on this course one, you can see it's got hover effects here. And it's very easy to edit this because, for example, if I want to change the image, all I do is select it. There's a button over here that I can click to change the image. If that's too many steps, still, you can simply double click on the image and change it. Right over there, it's right there. It's very easy. You can see how easy it is to change things. Also, if I want to change the text here, I simply double click and then I can add some other text right there like so. So as soon as I click away, it saves that. So that's how easy it is to change things, to add and change things. Now there's a lot you can add here. It's not just cards, there's different types of cards, of course. This one is a different one as well. Also, you have inputs, for example, uh, check boxes that are custom check boxes like this one here. Or, now when adding things, you have to be careful what you've selected because that matters. That's where the thing will land. So there's a lot, there's buttons here, all these buttons that look like that, there's drop downs, there's uh, models, somehow that's still empty, there's navigation bars, there's tabs, sidebars, pagination as well. So I'm going to be updating things in here as we go. There's even image sliders here over here, login, entire login pages, uh, sign up pages, there's galleries here, image galleries and stuff. And also, uh, there are charts as well. So for example, if I want a line chart, I can just click on that. And there we go, we have a chart over here. Can even add a bar chart if I want, or I could add a donut. So all these are charts that you can add in here ready to go. So you can see how this could be an advantage to uh, speeding up your workflow. And then, like I said, things are very easy to edit. Anything in here can be edited. You can also add new things. For example, if I click on this or even on the main item here, this main item here, if I click add and go to buttons, I can easily just add a button over here. Maybe this one, the download button. And there it is. You see that? Very, very easy. Uh, maybe this type of button. And there we go. So very, very easy to use. By the way, you can also add your own personal images to this. So if I double click this and I am logged in, so this only shows up when you're actually logged in. So you can sign up from the file menu and log in from there. That's free. So once you click on custom here, you can add your very own images here. You can also edit and delete images. If, you, if I try to do this, I can delete one of those images there because here you are limited to only a few uh, files. In this case is 24. So you always see the number here that you're limited to and you can only upload 10 MB size maximum 
So if you exceed the number of images you are allowed, the old ones will be deleted. The oldest image will be deleted. And if it belongs to any project you've done in the past, that project will have no image uh, then. So you have to choose your images carefully. I may increase this, uh, this number here, we'll see. All right, so you can click there and add a photo. So it will show you the upload process and then there is the photo, then you can add it there. This can be good for things like logos that are custom. Uh, so for example, this logo over here, I can add that there like so. Now, another way it speeds up your workflow is through cloning and copying and pasting. So let me just clear this. Let me just say new project and we have a new project. Uh, let me clear all the classes that require clearing. All right, so cloning and uh, the like. So let me add just one element here or one item. So if I go to my elements here, I can add this image thingy and I can also click and drag to enlarge it like that. Then if I double click, I can add another different image, right? Now, in order to edit things here, there is this properties box that comes over here. Now you can click and drag on this thing to move it to a different location. But if you mess it up or you, it's missing somewhere, you can just go to view and say reset properties panel. And there it is, it's gonna go back to where it's supposed to be. Okay, so with this, I can actually go to, let's say, margin here. These are the properties that you can edit. Now, if you don't want to use this thing to edit properties, you can simply go down here to styles and actually type what you want to do. So first of all, with margin, there's margin left, right, bottom, and so on. I can simply type 10 pixels and you see that thing move over there. And you will notice that now there will be margin 10 pixels over here which I can actually edit if I want like that, all right? Directly in there. Now, if I select this thing, I can do clone like this a bunch of times. And just like that, I have more images, which I can double click and change the actual content of those images. Now, when you clone an item, uh, it makes it easier to edit because if I add something, for example, I add a border on this thing. Let's say I had 10 pixel border like that. So don't worry about these things. I'm going to do in-depth tutorials on how to use all of this. So here I'm just showcasing what it can do. So as you can see, just like that, all these items have um, adopted the same properties because they are clones right so cloning is like that now if you don't want to clone you can also duplicate instead of cloning you duplicate so this one now becomes a separate entity because now i can change properties of this one like so without affecting the others because this one is a duplicate and not a clone so that's how you can easily copy what's already existing and make something entirely new from there now, apart from that, you can also do copy and paste. Now, let's say, for example, I want to add some other item here. Let me add an entire card because that's easy to show uh, complexity here. So I'm going to add this product one over here and there it is. So this is how it looks like. So it's got some hover effects and the like here. So I can select this uh, parent item here. Now, if you select an item like this and you're trying to select the parent because sometimes it's e it's not easy to select the whole thing you can go to edit and say select handle and it will select the parent thing now not everything has a handle but if it does it's going to do that then i can go ahead and just uh, you know clone this like i did with these guys i can just say clone and there it is, I have a new set right over here. Now, another thing I could do is actually copy this element and paste it somewhere else. Now, in order to see that it's pasted somewhere else, I'll load an empty div over here, like in here, and let me click and drag it to enlarge it, like so. So there it is, let me go down here. And then I can right click and say, paste element, boom. So this thing is now inside this uh like so right 
So there it is inside. I can paste as many times as I want. Look at how fast that workflow is. Let me remove the width for this thing. Boom. There it is gone. That way you see these. And then easily edit the images like so. And just like that, you have things that are very different. And then you can go ahead and edit some text like that to make it different. Okay, as quickly as that. And also something I didn't mention is you can go to file and preview this to see it in a separate thing without all these things coming in your way, getting in the way like that. So just like that, you have an HTML page ready to go. Let me close that. Now, of course, you can also cut these items if you just don't want to copy. Like for example, I can do cut and it disappears and I can paste it elsewhere. Maybe I add a different div with maybe a different color, for example. Let me just do that and increase this and then right click and paste. Now, if the right click isn't working well, you can still just go to edit and paste. So this is repeated on the uh, right click bar here. All right, so now another thing that really takes this off is you can actually import from existing projects. So let me just create a new project here and clear everything that I need to clear. All right, so now with this, imagine I add things like these cards that I've been adding. Let me add some other stuff, like this beautiful card over here and this one over here. Now, in case I have a previous project that I was working on and I like the elements that were in there, I can easily just import from a project. So all these are old projects that I have and I can simply click on this one, for example. And now I have a whole new thing down here that is ready to go. And I can change properties here, edit the text, uh, change the icons because icons over here, you can actually edit by going to the image icon. Uh, all properties that are inside a specific section are written at the top here. So you can click there, this icon, and you can click and all these are icons you can search for. If you want something very specific, for example, person, uh, then you can type in there and you get suggestions and you can click. And there it is, that has changed the thing. And if you want to change the color as well, you can change. And now you can see that all these are changing. That means they all have the same style. Uh, the CSS style is the same. That's why all of them are changing at the same time. So that is how you speed up the workflow even further by importing from several projects. So you can ha import as many times as you want, but just be careful what you've selected when you're importing because everything will land inside that very item. So if I import, you can also import this one. So it's a different project altogether. Uh, now they're in one project and one project, sorry, and then I can automatically just save this new project, which I can check later. Now, on top of all of this, you can actually add hover effects and animations. Like you've seen here, some things do react when you hover on them like that. And also you can have animations in here. So let me give you a simple example. Let me grab, open a project so that project that's existing, I'll click on this one. Uh, actually, not this one. Let me try uh, this one. Okay, so this has images down here. Now I want to show some animation. So if you want to animate the appearance or when this image appears, I can select maybe, let me try this one, right? So there's an animation tab here and you can just select the animation you want. So there's a list and this list will grow bigger over time, of course. And I will obviously improve the way animations are created here to give you more uh, fine grained control over how the animation works. But for now, this is all we have, but it's pretty good still. I can click, for example, the fade rotate from bottom and that's what happens. So this thing animates like that. Now, even if these things have the same class, the animations are very individual. 
so I can have a different animation for this particular item click and shake or maybe like jello there it is or I can shake horizontal I like that so all these are just uh, animations you can use over here let me try the shake horizontal like so now another interesting part is you can actually tell it when to animate uh, by default it will animate immediately but this item could be at the bottom of the page and you really want people to see the animation you can select when in view animate right i'll select this one as well when in view animate like that now if here as you can see when you're editing it shows you one animation at a time but you can go ahead and click play to review the animation you've selected for any reason and you can say play all to show you all the animations on that page at once but let's see what happens when we say when in view let's go to the preview page over here and let's preview this item so this is the uh, as you can see when I got to it that's when it actually did that now this one here is empty right so watch this as I scroll down and there it is so the animation happens when it's in view and not immediately they are very cool animations like for example let me see here some of these are very nice like focus in I really love focusing look what it does pretty pretty cool uh, you can grab this one as well let's see maybe jello so all these are uh, animations you can add so let me click here and you will see this appear and there it is looking pretty good and there we go so animations part of this as well just like hover effects right so I'm going to show how hover effects are done in an actual tutorial this is just a showcase but I'm sure you've already noticed that some things uh, if you open a project are animatable uh, I keep opening the wrong project here mm. let me just add a card actually let me say new project here and let's add a card because these cards do have animations that you've already seen so there it is these are transitions right hover effects all right so let's look at one more feature and that is responsive view so this whole thing actually can create responsive items so let me explain how that actually works now if you look at this thing for example um, where is this here let's try something simpler right let me open a new project so let me add an item here and I'm going to add you can add entire galleries here so let me go to gallery here and I'm looking for actually not gallery segments I'm looking for one thing now this image you see here means there's no preview for that item but let me click on blog list over here and this is what I get so this is an entire thing here already going on so what I want you to notice is that this is responsive you can go to the top here and if I click on a laptop view you see that the viewport is reduced and things adjust accordingly and there is one here for mobile view and then there's mobile landscape view and also this final oh this is actually tablet sorry and then mobile landscape and then mobile portrait so mobile portrait is the smallest view here and you can see how things will react over here now to show you that this is responsive actually if I go back to desktop I can actually change the background color of this so let me just actually make some adjustments here let me put the color as white and let me put the background color here as uh, maybe red something like this okay so we are in desktop mode now if I go all the way to laptop mode see the properties are still the same but if you go to the styles you will notice that if I am on desktop view there's all these styles on the selected item but on the laptop view there's actually nothing so what this means is that you can add new styles on this new view so for example I can change the background color over here to a different color maybe orange like that and now the color is orange all the way to the smaller uh, parts here but the landscape view is red and then here we change it to orange 
Now you can change it on all of these views as you go, just like that until you get to the one that you want. Or to, sorry, you get to the laptop version, right? Something like this. So now it's responsive. So meaning you can change things, you can hide certain things on certain views and so on, and the styles will stick. So here, if I go to preview page, uh, you will notice that if I go to, this is Firefox, by the way, if I go to responsive mode, you'll notice that as I change the viewport size, uh, CSS is changing as well at the top here. The colors are changing like that. Alrighty then. So this actually means you can edit any CSS styles in here for every single view. You can move things around. Uh, maybe you don't want this to show on a specific view. You can do that. So highly, highly uh, responsive. And things that we create here are already kind of responsive that are already that I created in here. Let me open a new project here. Uh, what am I trying to add? So for example, like this. So if I add an element here, oops, add an element. Okay, so if I add that item here, you'll see that there are hover effects here, but also it is responsive. Oh, apparently this isn't. Right. So responsiveness is easy to add, especially for items like this. All you have to do in the properties is add flex wrap to the item. So like this one has display flex, the container of this thing. All I have to do is put a semicolon here and say flex wrap and then say wrap like that. So we allow this thing to wrap around items. So if I now click on that, you see it's now responsive. Yeah. Even there, like so, it allows things to wrap around. So it's that simple to add things like that. But if you don't want to do that, you can easily go to every step of the way, make some changes and save them that way. Now to add to all of this, this thing is actually multi-page. So right now we're on page one. I know that if I click on these pages thingy, you see that there's this home page over here. So there's one page here, but I can actually create a new page by clicking on new here. We'll say pages, new page. So if I do that, now we have a new page to work with, right? So I can add new items here. Let me go over to this gallery over here. Let me add maybe a login page or something. Let's go to logins over here and let me add, uh, what can I add? Maybe this one. So that's a login page over here. Now, if I want to go back to the other one, I can go back to the other page still exists. That's page one and page two. And if I want to swap these around, I can just click whatever is selected. I click up and now page uh, two is actually the first page. This one is the second page and so on. So you can swap these things around. You can also click on properties and actually edit the name of the page, the link to that page, and add some page description and keywords if you want. Same thing here, whatever is selected, you can click properties and add that. So that makes it more interesting. You can make an entire website with this thing. Instead of creating one page at a time, you can make as many pages as you want here and save this. All right. And finally, this thing exports. So it exports to a zip file. So this thing I have here, I can just click download like that. All right. So if I click download, now it has a untitled project, HTML template. So if you do open this thing where it is, let me actually just extract to that folder and there it is so you see that there's this page two and html so index.html is this one right but then there's page two <clears throat> which is this one and you have a readme file here which you don't need to read there's also the css whatever was used in css the fonts uh, bootstrap icons and styles and 
you have whatever fonts you used in the project and then you have all the images that were used this project doesn't have any images so none of that is there also if you're using any javascript you will see some javascript uh, files in the css here so that's how you do it so there's no javascript being used here that's why we don't see any javascript uh, folders but when you do use that especially when you're doing the animations and stuff or you're using tabs because tabs do use um tabs use let me click here let me add a tab let's see if that will actually work let me go to where are all those tabs tabs over here right so if you have tabs or instead of tabs let me actually use a uh, what do you call those things again drop downs yes drop downs do use so there are several types of drop down one that drops up this one is up this one is down but let's try it down drip down so like this one here so the colors are all weird but you can edit this easily so color uh, add black like that okay let's close that so now we have a drop down thingy over here so if I do this I can see the drop down here so as you can see guys this is very useful too and best of all it's going to be free it is free already but in future I'm going to add premium items that will be accessible to people that are subscribed to my um, patreon because they really help me out to keep this channel running so at le the least i can do is provide something extra for them so what i'm going to do is i'll add items here that you can add to this ad list uh, that only those on patreon can actually access and premium accounts if we're going to have premium accounts which likely we will so but otherwise it's going to be free to use the basic stuff will be free to use everything i've shown here will be free to use always so you can use this too you can save your projects here and before i forget you have to actually um before you can save something you have to be logged in so you can sign up here which is a very simple process i'm already logged in that's why um so i am logged out now but I guess it wants me to refresh the page in order to do things. Okay. So now I can go to sign up here and actually do a sign up over here. Right. And then you can log in later when you are done. That way you can actually save. So if you see it says hi user here, it means you're not logged in. And so you can edit whatever you want, but you won't be able to save anything. So better you sign up and then you can save uh, what you want to save save your work right that way you can open existing projects and import from existing projects all right guys so i will see you in later tutorials where we create actual projects with this thing and see how it actually works all right i'll see you then